morning. Welcome to church. Have you come to lift up the name of Jesus? Because we're just ready this morning to lift up the name of our Lord, to give him glory, to give him praise, to welcome him into where you are, into this building where we are. Lord, come Holy Spirit. We want to meet with you this morning. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. You know, we need to embrace sometimes, this of course was a song that we would sing, but we need to embrace the thought behind it. So as we start this day out, what is your eye on? Like what? do you look at as being important? What really matters and counts? I know for me, I woke up at 2.30 in the morning and was praying through till five something because my eye was on something. And I was praying over it in relation to the will of God. 
So sometimes it's very easy to get distracted. You ever been distracted? very easy to get distracted and it's very easy at times to start looking at something that isn't the will of God. And how do we keep our eyes on the will of God? Our prayers that the will of God would be done. And you can be sure that God has things he wants to tell us about the day that we're in, about the future that we have, about the steps of faith we should take. And in this difficult time for so many people, how are they going to know the will of God? I've had an interesting thing happen the last several weeks. I've had a number of people who have come to me and they have said to me, I have been puzzled and I have been dealing with this thought or this kind of thing, what do I do with it? And then I was reading something in the Bible. I read your daily devotional. I read this, and there was the answer. And they have, in these tough, tough days, been finding the answer to their difficult situation, and they've been finding it in the Word of God. That's where they're finding it. Then they take a step of faith and embrace it. Now we need the peace of God and the presence of God and the fire of the Holy Spirit within us to have us ignited to do what God's will is. So we move forward in the will of God. How do you do that? Well, where are your eyes? Make sure your eyes are on God for his purposes. Make sure in the difficult time, hope comes into your heart. You see it in the New Testament where you've got the disciples, a lot of them in jail, and they're in there with their eyes on God singing a song, and then they see God at work. And what we need to get through difficult days is the fire of God alive in us. We need a sense that comes from God of his love and his mercy and his compassion. We need faith to see us through. And we need to deal with the temptations of sin and lock them out and welcome peace and joy inside of our lives. So God's love works in us, and it kind of helps us as we go through the fire of God. It purifies us. It anoints us. And I guess we have to look at our lives and say, well, what's really actively working in me, in my spiritual life? What's really making a difference for me? and igniting in me a sense of the peace and the presence and the power of God. And yes, in our prayers, we can ask God to send it. Remember, we used to sing, Oh, Lord, send the power just now. In a tough time, that's what you need, is the power of God. You won't make it all through in your own strength. You need the power of God. And when we ignore, when we look around us in the world today, we cannot ignore the Holy Spirit's voice. We can't ignore the eyes that he gives us to see things. We ask God to send his Holy Spirit. So we hear his voice and open our spiritual eyes so we see what he wants to have done. And open our heart to the Holy Spirit. Make a choice. God, I welcome your Holy Spirit in my life. Fill me. Empower me. And use me to do your will. And we want to make sure that we open our hearts to the Holy Spirit. And that he then gives us the right attitude in terms of what we face in life. Now you see this comes to us in the 119th Psalm. Verse 11 there says, 
Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. The word of God. And it's fascinating as I've had people come to me and talk to me in the difficult times that they're walking through. What they're finding is the word of God. And there will be a scripture, there will be a verse, there will be something in the word of God that comes alive in them and liberates them. It doesn't. And what we want to do is see the supernatural powers of God released in our heart. We want to see with our eyes what the will of God is. We want to know with our thoughts that we're thinking of it the way God does and our emotions reacted in praise and worship to him so that we can be touched by his power and make a difference in the world in which we live. We need the power of God. And we need the kinds of things that Satan would try and bring against us to rob our soul of the peace of God. We need them kicked out of our lives. So we have to make a choice. Do I chose to yield to the will of God? Do I make that choice? Do I want the word of God to affect my life? And read something and it says, don't do this, and read something and it says, do this, and my life adjusts to what God says to me through his word. So that I live a life transformed by the Holy Spirit. I live a life where by faith I welcome the Holy Spirit into my life and I ask him to purify me in my thoughts, in my actions, in what I do so I honor the Lord. Psalm 19 again tells us in the ninth verse, cleanse your ways. It's speaking to a young man. Take heed to thy word. So this world we live in is a kind of filthy world. But God wants us to cleanse our ways, to purify our hearts. And in John, it tells us in the 15th chapter, in the third verse, cleanse through the word which I have spoken to you. That's how we're cleansed. Well, God, if you've got something for me and you speak it to me through your word, cleanse me. Now, what this really tells us is, in a tough time, be sure you're reading your Bible. In a tough time, be sure that you are embracing the scriptures that God brings alive in your heart. The things that he has spoken to us, and he wants to use them to purify us so we can know and do his will. Paul, in 2 Corinthians 7, says, Cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Well, that's what we need. In a tough day, we need to walk in faith, in purity, and in submission to the will of God. Lord, show us your way. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Empower us to do your will and give us the strength, Lord, to do it. Now, it's again 119th Psalm. It's fascinating. So many good scriptures you find in the Psalms. 119th and verse 105, let the word be lamp unto your feet and light unto your path. Lord, that's a good thing to pray. Lord, let your word be a lamp and a light for me. Don't let me get distracted. Don't let me get thrown off. Let your word show me what your will is. We read these things in the Bible. And we want to then take them from the Bible and put them in our heart and embrace them 
and receive them and believe them and by faith walk in what God says for us to do. We want to live in light, not darkness. We want our eye to be fixed on God, on what he's doing. Has God shown you some of the things he's doing lately? When I mentioned about one of the things I've observed, I've seen some very stretched people who are stretched by what's going on in society and taking right to the edge, and then God shows them something. It's like a light comes on. God shows them something, and they embrace it. And when they welcome it into their heart, it's like it releases them and sets them free, and you see the difference. And they're just amazed and saying, God said this to me. God said that to me. And when by faith they embrace it, it's like a freedom comes with it. And they get their eye on God and they understand what he's doing in them and through them and for them. So the Bible provides freedom for our minds. I've been reading reports lately of so many people who are in chaos and so many people thinking about and committing suicide and so many things. What they need is the Bible in their heart and the freedom it brings to them. And it's freedom that comes from God. A strength from God that preserves them so they know the will of God and they're able to walk in faith with a new heart and a new mind and eyes that see differently. Make sure that when you pray, you pray so that your soul would be refreshed and your eyes would clearly see and there would be a light on your path that would enable you to do the will of God. Embrace God's word and walk in faith with him. Say yes to the Bible. Say yes to what it says to you. Say yes to do what God asked you to do. Say yes. Let's practice it. Yes. Once more. Yes. That's what he wants us. And when we say yes to him, the world around us will change in the sense that we will see it with different eyes. It will change in we will have a heart for it that comes from God. It will change because God does a work in you. And what I really saw these last few weeks with several of these different folks that have spoken to me, and they were going through really tough journeys in their life so hard for them but then out of the scripture they saw something that opened their eyes and i saw something really interesting god loves them he loves them and i want you to know every one of us god loves you and so if you're going through a tough time, ask him to show you through his word what his answer for you is and then embrace it and you will see coming into your life the love of God. You will see his love, protection, peace. I read about a bunch of Christians overseas. Oh, it's near Russia there. And the people around them didn't like them. So they went and poured gasoline all around their houses. And after the gas was all around their houses, they lit it on fire. And 22 people, they lost everything, every pair of clothes that they have, every shoes they have, 
everything. Their homes, I saw the pictures of it all. It's terrible. But before the fire took over, God woke somebody up and told them, get out of here. And God loved them and had them escape what had happened. Now many people are trying to help them. But you see, God loves you. And when he speaks to you, listen and respond. Because he may have something for you that's a path where you will do his will and you will see the hand and the blessing of God in your life. Don't let yourself get all distracted by what's going on all around us. Make sure your eye is fixed on him. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, we come to you this day. We pray in Jesus' name that our eyes will be fixed on you. That you will show us what your will is. You will speak to us through your word. You will guide and direct our steps. May the angels of the Lord encamp around about each one of us and protect us and direct us and use us as the children of God to do things for you. Lord, I pray for people who we know who don't know you. I pray that somehow you will open the door so faith can be released to them and they can come to know Jesus. I pray that in this difficult season that we're going through, that people will come to Christ and be transformed, be loved, be forgiven, be cleansed and be on their way to heaven. Bless us and give us strength for what you have for us to do. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit, into our lives. Guide and direct us in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, each one.